Hello everyone. I wanted to welcome everyone back to another coffee mug video. If you found my channel from the last coffee mug video I did, you'll know that we focused on the, the more high value coffee mugs that are out there and that can be sold for over $100 on eBay or Etsy or wherever. And today I just, there's more to talk about with coffee mugs. Those are kind of, I don't know, pie in the sky kind of coffee mugs that you may be able to find out there, but today I wanted to talk about coffee mugs that might be a little bit more realistic to find and may sell more in the $20, $25, $50 kind of range. So I'm going to share with you some of my some of my best coffee mug sales and some of my just average coffee mug sales and let's just see kind of what we can glean. Some of them are, again, are based on brand or based on category. And I know I will probably miss some things, um, some things that I just don't have time to talk about in one video. And so maybe we'll dive into some more specialized videos in the future, but after a bit. So anyway, as usual, please feel free to leave any kind of comment down below. Um, feel free to share with me your favorite coffee mug sales or ones that you absolutely always look for when you're out thrifting for resale. I also enjoyed so much reading all the comments from that last coffee mug video and all the comments you've been leaving lately. And it's been really enjoyable to, to hear your feedback about coffee mugs and the good sales that you've had. So feel free to keep on doing that. We are gonna get started right away. We're gonna switch over to my computer just for a little bit, and we're gonna talk about one of my favorite brands of coffee mugs to find and sell. Okay, so as you can see, the brand that I was talking about is Taylor and Ng. And as you can see the, the from the picture I have up here, this is was one of my top selling coffee mugs. Didn't quite make $100, but it did sell for $81. And this was, uh, just simply a horse with the word horse written in French. So if you know anything about Taylor and Ng mugs, they're kind of infamous or famous <laughs> for some of their naughty mugs that they have. And you can look those up if you want to. But, you know, a lot of people talk about finding those or they happen to notice those when they're out and about thrifting. But I actually have found that my better sales come from this line that they do and that's just different animals in either blue or brown and the names of the animals are written in French and it seems to be a very popular line of mugs by Taylor and Ng. So you do have to keep note or make note when you're you know obviously when you're listing you're going to put what color it is. There can be a slight difference in value between the brown and the blue so it's just you know research that when you're if you find one and you're looking for one. Um, so this next one was the next highest one I sold and it is a frog. And then we also, I sold one that was a bull. Okay, so the frog sold for $45. And then we also have this bull for $39. So I apologize, I'm, I'm going to be throwing out a bunch of just different um, pictures and prices and then as I edit I'm going to add in these pictures and so hopefully I can leave them on the strong on the screen long enough for you to see everything and I, I don't want to go too quickly. I also sold the chicken for $18, the pig for $36. But that was with free shipping, so maybe take $10 off, so $26. And then this dog one is kind of fairly common. I've found it and sold it twice, and both times I sold it for $18. So I definitely am always on the lookout for these mugs, for this style of mugs by Taylor and Ng. Now, we'll take a minute, we'll look in a minute at eBay solds, and you'll see that some of those mugs that I sold have even either gone up in value or maybe I just didn't price it high enough, especially the frog one. <laughs> okay, so they had a different, they also have a different line of of mugs called the Primitives and I have this cat type themed one that sold for $30. And then I also had an 
Elephant, which I believe was from the same line, and that sold for $20. Okay, and then there is, I also have this very interesting one um, that features Adam, and that's like the name of it, and in the Garden of Eden, it sold for 20 and we'll take a look in eBay solds. It's the Eve mug that you really want to be on the lookout for. And then there was another um, theme that they do called Minimals. And some of those can be really good. I sold this penguin one for $28. Um, and I also had sold a moose one. I don't know if I have a picture of it, but I sold a moose. It was just for like $10. And, you know, so the value can can vary and it also might have depended on the condition of that particular mug that I have. Okay, so let's take a look real quick here at our screen and we can see I've got Taylor, I just put Taylor in mug and I'm doing, okay, so sorry, I haven't switched it over to sold yet, that doesn't work. So we've got Solds, and that's ended recently, but we'll go ahead and do highest first. So highest, you will see groupings of the mugs um, will be a little bit higher with auctions. There you can see a little grouping of some of those um, animal mugs that I was talking about. So here we go. Look at this. The frog mug that I sold for $45 sells for $90. <laughs> Now, so either it went up or I just didn't comp it very good when I sold it. You know, it was quite a few years ago. Um, there's the frog again for 80. Here's the horse mug for 75. So I was pretty good with mine there. Um, it's a dog bowl, not quite a mug. Okay, so there's the Eve mug that matches the Adam one that I had sold. And so the Eve mug must be more rare. It sells for $75, $80 all in there. Okay, another grouping. There's two mugs in that one, 65 with the bowl. And there's a rabbit sold for 70. Okay, so that's one of the naughty ones in the background, but it's combined with the, the French theme. The rooster looks like it's a good one, $70 for that one. And let's see, more of the naughty ones, another Eve, an Adam. We'll see, they got a pretty good price on that Adam one, so maybe I did underprice the Adam one back then. Or like we've said, some of these might have gone up in the past few years, but I would definitely keep a lookout for those. Okay, there's some snails. That would be good. So yeah, some of the, here's a rooster for 70. I don't think I ever sold a rooster. I sold a duck. Anyway, yeah, so prices are pretty good on these. And the more, you know, I don't know, maybe not rare of an animal, but yeah, like a snail might be a little less common than like the chicken or something like that. So Anyway, Taylor and Ng, that was the first brand that I wanted to talk about today. So the next brand I was going to talk about, we talked about in the first video, was Starbucks. And, um, you know, it's such a big topic. There's plenty of mugs. We saw some, like, big number mugs, and it looks like even since I did that video, there's a few that have sold a little bit higher, like this Seville one. So that was that North Island. That was like the highest one the day I was looking the other day. Um, but there's plenty of mugs, Starbucks mugs, that'll sell in the $40 range. There's even more that sell in the $20 to $30 range. And then even some that sell for a lot less. So basically, like I said before, I look up Starbucks mugs. I don't just automatically buy them, even the city mugs. And a lot of, some, a lot of my best sales have been not city mugs, actually. Um, I look up the tumblers. Uh, sometimes the tumblers are related to a location and they can do pretty well. Um, but here's a tumbler I sold. It was a collaboration with Bando and it sold for $50. 
And then I had this coffee, this, this is a coffee mug, and at first glance it doesn't look like a city mug, but it is a location-based one, and it was Hawaii. It's printed on there, and it sold for $40. I also had this Tokushima mug that sold for $50. So locations can be good. Um, let's see. I had a New Mexico mug. So for a while I was collecting this series of coffee mugs of the Starbucks mugs with the locations in the cities and somebody, a family member had traveled a bit. And so they picked up the New Mexico mug for me and, um, I kept it in my collection for a while. And then as I was selling off my collection, I sold that one and it was one of the better selling mugs. Um, it sold for $43 and I think, think, you know, there's just certain states that either less people travel to or there's just less population. So there's less Starbucks stores. And so some of those city mugs are harder to get a hold of. And so they'll sell for a little bit better. Here's another um, global icon style mug. Um, Boro, I'm going to say it wrong. Borokai Boro in the Philippines sold for 40 and then I had this Dubai Starbucks mug that I sold for 35 Now I've got this one currently. It's London. And I have it listed. It just hasn't sold yet. And I think I only have it listed for 20 It's not a super sought after mug, but that's okay. It'll sell eventually. Now the other thing to keep in mind with Starbucks mugs is sometimes there are Starbucks mugs that don't look like Starbucks mugs. And they can be current or they can be kind of vintage. So just take a look at this little um, mug. It's It was from um, Starbucks in Seattle, down near the original Starbucks store. They opened up a roastery and a tasting room. Um, I have not researched it lately. I'm assuming it's all still there. But I found this little coffee mug. It's real. It was really short, and it sold for $50. So, um, you know, I didn't peg it as a Starbucks mug when I first saw it, but it was interesting looking. So I picked it up and then look at this, this mug. This is an older style Starbucks mugs. Um, sometimes, well, they used to use other companies to, you know, before they branded their own mugs and all the mugs said Starbucks on the bottom, they would use other companies to make their merchandise. And so we have this bunny uh, coffee mug with the bunny on it. It sold for $40. It's just kind of an unusual looking mug, but it was definitely Starbucks. Um, there's a, also another one. I'll have to try to get a picture. I sold Heartstone um, is a pottery company, and I've sold several of their mugs as well. And they had a collaboration, Heartstone and Starbucks. And they don't look like Starbucks mugs. The, the one I sold had like a golden retriever on it. And I can't remember off the top of my head what that sold for, but I think it was in the $30 range. Okay. So another category I just wanted to mention as I was looking back at my sales um, over the years, <clears throat> in Starbucks, one of the ones that I did really good at was selling some vintage Starbucks mugs. Now, I haven't really come across any lately, but I'll give you some examples here. We've got, um, hold on. You know what? Let me pop over here and I think this will be a better, better view of it. So, um, I've got some of these travel mugs and then also just a regular coffee mug here. And what's interesting about the older Starbucks mugs, you can actually, you can find charts online that help you date the Starbucks merchandise based on their logo. So here's just a, a few examples. So like this is a late eighties mug and it, it was a commuter mug. I had the, I'm pretty sure that one had the lid as well. And you know, these are all very kind of similar styles. So these have an older logo right here. This one is a similar style mug, but it has an, a, a little newer of a label of a logo. We had this globe shaped one. You can see I sold that a couple times. And then just this basic coffee mug um, that has the older, 
older, older logo on it as well. So let me pop up an example. I'll pop up this burgundy one a little bit closer right here. And you can see this older logo. They, you know, you, sometimes people put old logo in their listing or they put split tail logo. So when Starbucks started, this was their original logo and it shows like the whole body of the mermaid and the chest and everything like that. And I, it was deemed a little too risque after a while. And so it got, it got so that you were just seeing her head and her long hair and stuff like that. And maybe just the ends of her tail. So it's changed over the years. It's evolved. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that they did, you know, they do a version. This is a newer mug. This one is, oh, it doesn't have a date on it, but oops, they have this one, this mug, the first Starbucks store. So these mugs, they do a kind of a repop, you know, of, with the original logo and everything even more even older than the one you see on those 80s mugs that I had so this was the original like 70s logo anyway these mugs can only be bought at that um, that store in Seattle the first store down there on Pike Place Market and um, so anyway this is just a personal mug we have in our in our which you call it in our cabinet. <laughs> it's one of my husband's mugs that he likes to use. So just because you see that older logo on a mug, don't automatically assume, you know, look at the bottom. Most of these mugs did not have any Starbucks information printed on the bottom. They were made in Japan or just made in different places. So if we go back over to, you know, Starbucks, Obviously, I'm at the high numbers again, so you would kind of have to do your own searching to drop down to get into the, you know, or you don't even have to research. Just if you find a Starbucks mug, just look it up before you buy it because you just, you know, not all of them are worth a ton. Okay, and so then that was our vintage Starbucks mugs. And so we're going to move right on into another brand that I like to sell, which is Odagiri. And, you know, these are not super high money mugs. They are just ones that will sell for me when I pick them up, especially if I can pick them up cheap enough. Um, so, like, I'm going to pop up a picture right now. This golfer mug actually took way longer to sell than I expected, but it finally sold for $20. You know, I just said that they will sell, but... The theme is important. Um, I've done well with different fishing village or boats or, you know, things like that. Some airplanes as themes on the mug. And I do tend to kind of focus on this, this shape and style. It's, I call it like a grand mug. It's a, it's taller than a regular mug. It's more narrow on the top. So there's less surface area for the heat to come out. It holds quite, whew, sorry, I have coffee in here. It holds quite a bit of um, coffee in it. So I kind of picked that style. So as you can see, I've got this fishing themed one sold for $29 free shipping. So let's take $9, $10 off. That's another $20 mug. This wolf one was really cool. Also sold for $29. Um, this tall ship sold for $22. And then there's this another one. It's it's not like a scenery one. It's a more of a stoneware or a dinnerware kind of pattern. It was called Hacienda, and it sold for eighteen dollars. So if we look at our screen right now, hopefully I'm not going too fast for my editing. <laughs> That'll be fun later. Um, if we look down at what's selling on eBay, um, you know, and a lot of the ones I've been showing you, I sold on Etsy and I did pretty well with vintage mugs on Etsy. And also Etsy saves your listings for as long as you want to leave them there. And so I have better records of my mugs and pictures and things like that on Etsy. So that's why a lot of the pictures you're seeing are coming from there. So, um, I think I did sell one of those mushroom mugs, but that was before, it's more like a soup bowl. 
you know, the mushroom craze is pretty hot right now. So that little set sold for 90, a mixed lot sold for 85. There's some tiki mugs. So here's another thing I wanted to mention. I've sold these as well. Anytime I find Odagiri with these stripes, it's brown and blue. It's a stoneware mug. Any pieces in this pattern, it's called Horizon, usually sells very well. So these are four really nice mugs, kind of like this shape, and those sold for $85. So you can see a lot of the Odagiri um, in these higher numbers. You know, these are owls, but there were six of them. So lotting them up seems to be the best way to get a really good price. That's, yep, six elephant mugs. So especially on eBay, people are lotting up their Odagiri mugs quite a bit. Um, well, see, now we're getting down to this hummingbird. Had a really good selling price. Grand mug, so they use that word grand mug as well. And that nice big stoneware one sold for 48. Couple Roadrunner mugs. $48 just for one of those, okay? So maybe you don't want to lot them up. So double check before you lot things up. <laughs> what they might be worth. But anyway, that whole stoneware um, look and vibe, you know, stoneware mugs can do pretty well these days on Etsy and even Poshmark sometimes. Okay, let's move over to another brand that's just kind of fun. It's Fitz and Floyd. And I've sold a few Fitz and Floyd pieces and mugs over the years. I do kind of keep an eye out for them because they're just, they're fun and they're kitschy. And um, people will eventually buy them. So I'm going to pop up right here. I sold this ostrich mug for $20. It was really cool because the neck was the handle and then the head kind of went through the mug and was like hidden on the inside. Um, this pair I sold together for $25. They were called Ski Olympics. And just like I said, just funny kind of quirky little mugs that Fitz and Floyd are known for. And then I sold this woodpecker mug for $18. So if you look at some of the um, things right here that we've got on eBay solds, high to low, um, someone had a big owl set. That was awesome. These four mugs with the feet, they're just a mug with real feet, <laughs> 125 but that was free shipping. Um, again, a lot, a lot of sets in here. Um, that one is a witch face from Australia. That one sold pretty high. These vegetable set of eight vegetable shaped mugs sold for 60. And then Fitz and Floyd also has some dinnerware. And so some of their retired dinnerware, um, patterns can sometimes be something that people are on the lookout for. So they do, as you can see, they do a lot of these 3D effect ones, these rabbits, um, a set of six. So you kind of get the idea. There's just some fun mugs, the really high numbers. Here's a nice little set of dinosaurs. Those would be fun to find. So yeah, you can either lot them all together, move them quick, or um, like I said, sometimes you just can sell a replacement to somebody for $20 or so, possibly a little bit more. Okay, then f for another kind of fun um, category to sell in, I'll just show you an example of, of this mug. Okay, this is kind of like that. Fitz and Floyd we just saw. This one is um, Pottery Craft makes this this one. They kind of have a telltale um, glaze and coloring. But, you know, he's wearing sneakers and everything. And I realized I found this in my coffee cabinet, coffee mug cabinet for reselling. And I was like, I don't think this is listed, but I was wrong. I'm pretty sure this is on Ruby Lane. And I think what I'm going to do, 
look at he's got a butt he's got butt cheeks um I think what I'm going to do is put it, I'm going to give it to my husband to put on his Etsy shop because I just think this will sell on Etsy a lot faster than it sold on Ruby Lane. Um, anyway, so I might try to do that. So the category is I kind of tend to call it ugly face mugs, okay? And there's certain names that are really good f for for or to keep in mind in this category now this one didn't have a face but it just kind of reminded me of that of that category and I would kind of lump it all together and one of the names to be on the lookout for is Eakin or Aiken E-A-K-I-N Robert Eakin and so that's what I mean the mug is this face so a lot of people put ugly in the title and they might be like a cowboy or football player, as you can see, all these different things. And this, you know, solds are right about the $25 to $35 range. Just kind of a fun thing. So here's the one um, Eakin mug that we had that sold. It sold for $31. Another brand or artist to keep an eye out for on this is Mayan. May M A H O N Rich Mayan or Ma Mayhan <laughs> I don't know I don't know how to say it um, and his I don't know some of those look like they're a little bit taller but we've got another cowboy we've got an ashtray it was fifty dollars okay so sixty dollars free shipping anyway a lot of best offers accepted on this this um, monkey one sold for 40 and I don't know that I have ever found one by him um, but I did I'll put up there's one I have that was a cowboy I'll put the picture up right now and it also sold for $31 and it um, was unsigned so I don't know who the artist was on that and then the only other sale I had in that similar category was um, this mug. It was Laurel and Hardy. And it was Laurel on one side and Hardy on the other. And that one sold for $25. Um, just something unusual. You know, you see something unusual, just kind of pick it up and double check. And um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say about that. There was another brand as I was researching. It was Herx Works. And those mugs seem to be selling pretty well right about that same range. So I know I had a couple other ugly face mugs sales. I just couldn't find the pictures or the records of them. But it's definitely something we kind of keep our eye out for. Okay, let's talk about far side mugs. Um, just briefly. These kind of seem to just be a very perennial kind of favorite. I've sold far side mugs for a long time. You know, even back when I was okay, you know, selling mugs for $10, $15, we would just pick up any far side mug we saw and we could sell it like around that price. Um, some of them seem to be a little bit harder to find. And then also far side mugs in their original boxes seem to do a little bit better. So here's one that I had that was new in box. Um, I sold it at that time for $18 plus shipping. And then here's another mug we sold. Um, it was Bummer of a Birthmark <laughs> and it sold for $27. But we can take a quick look right here down if we go down Farside Mugs. Um, Anyway, some of the like harder to find, it looks like, like this one, the blue bird of happiness, chicken of depression. Anyway, it sells around 40, at least a couple times. You know, some of these ones people say, oh, are rare, you know, and then a few that came in their original boxes seem to be doing pretty well. So yeah, it's definitely something that, you know, when we see one, we pick it up, just kind of do a quick research on it. And it always seems to be pretty popular. Okay. Then the next category that I'm going to talk about is 
dinnerware. We kind of talked about it on the original video. And um, let me see if I have... Okay, yeah, let's go over here. So this, again, was one of my probably top mug sales ever. And the brand is Lynn Chase. Okay, so I had found a set of dinnerware um, at my local Goodwill. I think I paid $20 for all of it. And Lynn Chase is definitely a bolo name you need to know in dinnerware. And I sold, so as you can see, here's some mugs by her. Okay, we're in the $60, $70 range, sometimes for a couple mugs or for a set. Uh, $50, $65. Okay, so here I'm going to put up on the screen. These were two coffee mugs. They were identical. They were part of the same dinnerware pattern, but one she signed, which do, I don't, doesn't really add any value to it. Um, and then the other one was unsigned, and I they both sold for $70 each. So that was really good. And I sold all the plates and the bowls and the other things I had. And I don't, I can't even remember. I profited thousands of dollars on that. Okay. Another brand we talked about in the last video was as we talked about dinnerware, we talked about Denby possibly being one that you should look up. Not every pattern, but I did find these Denby jet mugs and a person bought three of them. And so we got $80 for those. Another brand that you want to know about, I've sold different pieces of this brand. It's California Pottery. Um, the original artist was Edith Heath, H-E-A-T-H. -E and so um, Heath Pottery is just a definite bolo. Um, this little mug sold for $24. Um, and then another brand, you know, I've sold this brand over the years and it's Laufer. Okay. So like the flatware company or the, the same name, right? Laufer is flatware is made by toll, right? Okay. So this, these were mugs made in Japan and there's a bunch, sometimes they're like a, uh, botanical print on them. And I've sold a bunch of those, but they're, you know, they're like 10, $15 or so. They just always consistently sold. Um, but Lawford dinnerware, it's it's kind of a very chunky, heavy stoneware look, and it's fairly popular right now. So this was in one of my what solds not that long ago because my husband sold this set of four mugs for $60. Um, the buyer bought another two that looked very similar but were a slightly different pattern for another $35. Um, so it was a good sale and, and they were all the plates for this Laufer, um, dinnerware are what we use every day. So we use the dinner plates and the salad plates, um, and we just weren't using the mugs. And so we decided to sell them. So, you know, take a double, take a look at Laufer. I've sold some other Laufer stoneware mugs for 15, $20, just very, you know, people like that real chunky stoneware um, boho kind of look right now. And um, so, I don't know. It's a name to kind of keep in your head is Laufer. Okay, and one last thing I wanted to show you while I have the screen in this setup is this was, we talked about computer, obsolete computer mug, or compute, not obsolete. All right, just vintage computer company, vintage mugs, right? So app, the Apple mugs we saw were the ones that were going up into like the hundred dollar range. Um, and I said I had sold an IBM mug and this is the mug that I sold. So I got, picked this up for 50 cents at my thrift store, sold it for $40, just says IBM internal use only, just very simple kind of mug, but I knew it was an older, an older piece, like from the eighties or so. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the different camera because I just have some, I'm going to call them one-offs or honorable mentions. We don't need to look at my screen for these. And so let's just switch over real quick. 
Okay, so let's keep going. Let's talk about some of these honorable mentions. So these are just basically some of the, the coffee mugs I've sold over the years, maybe that just don't fit into a certain category or don't fit into, you know, something we can talk longer about. But I just wanted to share just to kind of give you an idea of some of the things that are out there and what they have sold for. So this first one is, um, oh, okay. So in my last video, we talked about, or we saw one of the high milk glass mugs had to do with Corning and Pyrex. And it was a real thick mug that was called a Watchman mug. And it ha didn't have a handle. And I said in that video, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I said, we'll talk about that in the next video. So here's a picture of the mugs that I had. Um, and I ended up selling eight of these. Okay. Just, I would trickle them out in my shop, you know, once in a while and they sold for $40 in free shipping. So what the deal was with these mugs is that they are from like World War II. They have a really early Corning mark on the bottom. It's a picture. It looks like a guy blowing a trumpet, but it's a guy, it's a glass blower. And the, the glass is really, really thick. And it also is handleless. Okay. It's for a watchman. So he could, you know, whoever's on watch that night has this mug. He can hold on to it. It keeps his hand, all of his hands and fingers can wrap around this mug and like keep him warm. Okay. So they call them watchman mugs. So it was a really good deal. I actually bought these in Montana one time when I was visiting and we found them at a thrift. I just thought they were super interesting. They got packed up. We brought them back to Washington. I never got them listed. I think we moved again or something. And I ended up moving them back with me to Montana. And then I started listing <laughs> them here. Don't ask me why. Okay. But anyway, they sold really well. So they sold for $40 free shipping and they would sell like really, really quickly. So $30 times eight, $240. I paid about 75 cents a piece. Okay. Another uh, brand we talked about last week was Arabia Finland. And we talked about some of the enamel wear mugs. And I did have one of those that I found and sold and it was, it was smaller. It was a child's mug. And so that's up right now. And that sold for $48. Next one's just kind of a fun one, Pottery Craft, same brand as that mug that we have with the sneakers. And it just was a nice size, it was nice and big. It says beer on it and it sold for $30. The next one, this one I'm just showing you, I had several examples of this, but I'm just gonna take the time to show you one. The brand will not really matter that much, but the brand on this one particularly was Feltman Langer. And it's more the shape of the mug that I wanted to point out. So this mug sold for $24. A lot of times they're called a Mariner mug. Um, it can be like a desk mug, office mug, travel mug. It's wide bottomed with a very narrow top, but it's kind of advertised for use on boats as well. And a lot of the ones I sold had a lid to them as well. So it's a travel mug, but one that won't tip over very easily. They, they also call them no spill mugs. So a lot of times they have a nautical theme. I've also picked them up in stoneware with just as a souvenir type mug. Um, and then I picked up one that was just stoneware in that shape, very chubby. And it just didn't, it didn't have, and it had a travel lid kind of thing but nothing printed on it at all. And it also sold really well. So just kind of a shape also that you can keep in mind that people are looking for. Okay. Um, we're also going to talk about this next one. You'll recognize the pattern. I'm sure it's a Corning wear mug and the brand is very common corn flour, but the mugs are not as common. So these two mugs sold for $30 together. I've sold the mugs. Um, I found them here and there and have sold them, you know, $20 a piece or so. But this next one is also a Corning wear mug, but the pattern is a little harder to find on a mug. And it's the country festival pattern 
the rooster really popular i sold this one for 30 dollars okay um we're gonna talk next about mugs that are marked vietri vietri <laughs> on the bottom I'll, I'll also these are four little espresso cups that i sold for $36 and you know that's only nine dollars a piece but they were easy to pop them together and they sold really quickly um four espresso mugs and i'll have a picture of the back stamp up here as well you can see it's very clear printed where it's from and anyway that sold really quickly uh one of the comments in my other video mentioned that mugs um from i pretty sure this is an area not necessarily an artist but mugs um marked Viet vietri actually can sell pretty well okay these are fun ones to find i have found a few of these sets over the years i'm going to show you both but the first one it's a set of six i'm pretty sure it was six um but they're irish coffee mugs with saucers so skinny and tall with saucers the artist or the maker is Legardo Tackett for Schmid. Just a good vintage name to keep in the back of your head. I'll show you the mark right here. And this set of six sold for $60. I think I've got that right. These are green. They have clovers. They're kind of a little bit, you know, it's Irish coffee with clovers. I think that one's a little bit more of a common um, set. But then I also found this set one day that was purple and it had little hearts on it. And this set of four sold for $75. So definitely a name to keep your eye out for. Um, it's not just these little cups, but there's also other pieces by Legardo Tackett that, that can sell really, really well. Okay, next brand, again, we could talk about a lot, and that's Frank Oma. Um, I think we talked about it a little bit in the first video, but I found this, I just wanted to share this one mug that I found. I've sold other ones over the years, but again, it just depends on, you know, if they're a little bit different or if, you know, the color of the glaze, and it's just a lot to get into for this video. But I saw this mug at the thrift store, and as you can see, it's a very different looking kind of mug and it's in the shape of a tricone drill bit. So I sold that mug for $60 and I think the reason it went so high was because of the glaze. The color was like a bluish purple, something like that, blackish purple, and it sold for $60. If we are going to talk about mugs, we need to talk about Wachtersbach. <laughs> Wachtersbach mugs. Um, you've probably seen them. They're a little bit harder to find in good condition. A lot of times you find them chipped at the thrift store. I will say that. I do tend to look for the ones that are marked West Germany because I know for sure that they're vintage. Um, but the example I'm showing you right here was actually made in Spain and I had picked it up because of the theme. Scotty dogs are always very popular and I forgot to write in my notes how much this sold for. So I'll try to add that in as I edit as well. And, um, it was just a super cute little mug. There's some heart ones that sell really well. They also do a bunch of Christmas dinnerware that does well. Um, next one is just a mug. It's by Anthropology, and it's one of their um, series that they do with initials or with monograms. And I had just sold this style mug several times. I've I found it. I've sold it. The pattern on these are it's called homegrown. So it's Anthropology homegrown, and. This initial K mug, the one I'm showing you, sold for $28. Um, I've sold it a couple. I've found the K fairly often, but I think there's quite a few K names out there. And um, and then some other letters will probably sell for more um, because they didn't make as many. Um, 
at the time, right? Because maybe that's just a, a letter that's not as popular. And I actually just sold this same mug on Poshmark a little a couple days ago, and I sold it for $20 on Poshmark. So I've kind of sold them anywhere in that range, $20 to $30, depending on, and even less, depending on, you know, I usually just grab them because I know they'll sell. And then I see what I can get for them. I've sold quite a few of those on Poshmark as well. Okay, here's just another fun random one. Um, it was a pottery artist, a Zuni artist, and I just happened to notice it at the thrift store and I thought it looked unusual. So I, I think even at the thrift store, I couldn't even research it very well. And I just had to make up a price. So I just got ahead and put $50 on it and it sold. So that was kind of interesting. Um, this next one, the artist is April Cornell. And it has blueberries on it. So I know I've heard the name April Cornell. Um, but I also got, so what did I, did I say that? I got $35 for it. Okay. So that was something that was really good to keep an eye out for if you see that again. I've only found it the one time. I just kind of came across it as I was researching this and I was like, oh, $35 is pretty good. Okay, I was thinking I had left out something in my notes, but now I can find it. This is definitely a name that you need to put on your bolo list for coffee mug brands or dishes or pieces or anything. It's Emma Bridgewater. Here are two mugs that I found at a thrift store and I sold them both to the same person and they went overseas and I listed them separately, but the person bought both and they went overseas. So they paid $110 for both of these mugs and then spent whatever they had to for the overseas shipping. So anyway, Emma Bridgewater, definitely a name to kind of keep an eye out for. Now, this is just a fun little, another fun little random one. Um, my, my husband's grandmother was getting rid of a bunch of stuff at her house. She was getting rid of this mug and we were just like, hey, you know, there's people who like Snapper. I'm like, it's vintage, who knows? And so we threw it up on eBay and got $30 for that mug. So, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. I could even see like a baseball cap with snapper on it being something that somebody would want as well. It's just one of those, I don't know, not that people collect lawnmowers, <laughs> but they're just like snappers like, oh, my dad had one and I want one and, you know, and I have one and they just like the brand. So I just think it's interesting. Okay. Last one that I'm going to share is this funky looking one that is by, um, Cheeseburger in Paradise, Jimmy Buffett, right? And it was unusual because it has a little feature on the handle that spins. So they call it a spinner. Okay, so my takeaway on that one, if the mug is unusual, look it up, see if it's worth anything. I sold that spinner Jimmy Buffett mug, hamburger in paradise, or cheeseburger in paradise for $30. Okay, so I apologize greatly if this went way too fast. I am trying, I was trying not to make this an uh, hour long or anything like that. And there were definitely things I missed. There were, you know, we could have talked about uh, Sandra Boynton mugs or all sorts of different things that we probably still could have talked about as far as being worth picking up and flipping. Um, and so some I, some categories I missed on purpose because there's too much to them and maybe they'll be the subject of a future video. Um, and other things I know I just missed. So if you can see something glaringly obvious or some category that you have success with, go ahead and please leave that comment below, like I said. And um, if you have any questions, this week... Okay, you're seeing this. This is coming out on Tuesday. We're planning on my my usual what sold would have come out today, but we're going to bump that to Thursday. So we'll have the what sold video on Thursday. Now, if you also, I, I want to say thank you everybody for watching. <laughs> 
And also, if you missed the coffee mug video that I keep referencing, I will go ahead and put a link to it up here or over here or over here. And we also did a video on how we ship our coffee mugs. So if you missed that as well, um, that'll be the other one that's up on the screen. Okay, thanks again, everybody, and we will see you soon.